she wanted to come back and discuss the ULDC, which you've obviously done. Are there other points that you have thought of from yesterday's presentation or the presentation of the topics this morning that have given you um, pause to ask something else, question something, add anything to what we have said over the last day and a half? No, I don't. It, to me, it, it's been very thorough. It's been a very good, very good discussion about some of these issues. I know that in my, from my position, you know, I've got some things that I need to do to help staff do their work. Um, you know, we talked about SPLOS 8. We talked about the timeline on SPLOS 8 and the need to be sure that those projects are pulled together so that we can put the projects together for the referendum, uh, hopefully prior to mid-May. Staff needs that information, so as soon as if you've got a specific item that you'd like to have considered, please go ahead and get that to staff so that they can be working on them because they need a whole lot more than just an idea. It takes a lot more than that to make sure that, that an item has the support to get on the referendum. Also, I'd like to know, uh, I guess, a little bit more specific in the park and rec area. I know uh, they got $20 million for the splash sheet. That, I'd just like to know. That's a wish list. I know it's a wish list, but I'd just I like, I like to know, I guess, some of what they're right. like. To, uh, and that, that is a swag as much as anything else. I think you all know that the, plant, uh, the, the VLPRA is uh, just before soliciting RFQs for a new long-range plan, and they are required to do that. Uh, the last one uh, was done by Lowson Associates, um, who we have worked with almost ever since I've been here, I think, um, in design of various uh, parks and rec uh, facilities. What they are discussing now in this amount is whether or not they want to complete the project in North Lambs, and if so, to what extent. Obviously, they want to complete it. That, that will initially be uh, soccer fields. But their long-range plan that they're currently under also includes baseball, softball, um, a uh, recreation facility, of uh, the gym, team center, et cetera, et cetera. That's a, that's a very large target. Um, so what Paige has passed out is a jump drive that includes what their long-range plan is now. It's their current master plan. That's a printed copy. That's, it's just that thick, so we just didn't print copies. That is the master plan electronically. We saved at least a oh, tree. Right. Yes, yes. So that's, that's all that's on that drive, but yeah. it is a, a copy of the master plan you can go through. And, and you know, I just bring it up because I know, even from a citizen standpoint, when they see $20 million in Park Wendell, they'll want to know some about what Mm -hmm. sure. and what that, again, th those were just swag numbers, but before the referendum is presented, those projects will be part of that list. I have all, citizens will know what they are. I've already asked the um, Parks and Rec Authority to begin to think about the projects. Obviously, they I don't know how many of y'all have attended their meetings. Uh, they have um, committees. Uh, that function under the authority appointed by, I mean, that are filled by members of the uh, authority. And uh, they have, a, one of the committees is a facilities committee that looks at upgrading and maintaining what they already have, as well as looking at uh, the type of facilities that they want in the future. Part of what this includes, uh, DeMarcus, at North Lounge is uh, adding lighting to at least one of the soccer fields. 
when we first began to discuss this, we had hoped to be able to put a soccer facility together that would at least include um, bleacher seating or seating of some kind, lighted field, uh, and then other fields that could be used for either uh, older uh, participants or if you were going to use the young, uh, if the young participants were going to use it, you could turn the field sideways uh, and get more of those games or matches in. Um, but they also want to look at, like say, the um, basketball, I mean uh, the uh, baseball. Now, the program is very successful so far in working through the school system. Uh, which is one of the best things I think that uh, they have done was to incorporate the youth representing the respective uh, two public schools. And by doing that, it has increased participation and increased uh, pride, I think, in those participants. Now, You've got one, I mean, I think that that has Absolutely. been the case. Yeah. Um, they still use the facilities at these uh, public schools for basketball. I think you also know that one of the big things they do is allow the uh, smaller kids to play football at um, Lowndes and at Valdosta Stadiums, which is a big deal for these kids. Um, but as a, as a whole, having participated or been involved in this uh, recreation since I got here, this is the best recreation program I have seen. I will, I will place this uh, against anybody in the state on our size. And I say that without fear of contradiction because they've been awarded four years in a row the best program for their classification in the state. So I think you should all be very, very proud of what you have over there and what the citizens are receiving as a product of the funds that they have. Um, for a long, long time, they... That was not a revenue producer. If it was, it, the revenue went somewhere else. We never saw it. <laughs> right uh, they, uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman, you sat through their uh, meetings. You've heard the report from the auditors. Y'all have seen some of it in your audit report. They are a good return on the investment of the public, not only financially, but also product-wise, product of what these youth are receiving. And I, I just think that they have a good program, have a good plan to answer your question specifically. I think you're going to see a desire to maximize the use of that acreage off of uh, 75 for recreation, I think you're also going to see that that will be a, an attraction for BSU and their soccer program. I think you're also going to see plans in the future for uh, aquatics. I, I have said to Parks and Rec, I don't think our community is at a state right now, a size right now, where Lowndes can have an aquatic program, Valdosta can have an aquatic program, the Y can have an aquatic program, Parks and Rec can have an aquatic program, because that, that's a very expensive facility. Can they go together and do this? Most likely. Are they going to have to give up some of their territorial attitudes? Yeah. But I think that this is a program that will help them do that. Yeah. I mean, our Parks and Rec program. Well, you know, everybody needs to have a good understanding too that the Boss Lounge Park and Recreational Party, we think of it as you. It's not necessarily just you. There's adults, seniors, uh, and there's a big need out there right now 
uh, that there's been a little bit of discussion on about um, possibly another senior center. Um, because the senior center that the centers that they're using right now is totally maxed out. I've talked to a lot of senior citizens that stresses the issues of uh, that they utilize that senior center specifically the one out on Park Avenue now. Um, and I think it's pretty much busting at the seams if you want to say that you know, for that. So again you have a lot of to things. Forward to. Yeah, got a lot. But keep in mind again is that everything that the Parks and Rec does, we typically think of you they do a great job with you, but they also have a service that they provide for a lot of the other citizens in this community. That's true. So I have a request for mail and um, talk with them, and I think we need to join a lot of crazy things that's going on. With, without a doubt, I, he's doing an outstanding job and, and everything. I just want to just beg to explain if someone asks me you know, what the twenty million dollars is. Yeah. Uh, uh, Especially when it comes to spot shape. Yeah, I think you'll see you'll see more of that. You'll see that to get off right now. I told George, give me an estimate, and I said, but don't get your feelings hurt when you don't get it. But fifteen million of that was just in one project, which was the teen center uh, gymnasium type facility. So, uh, and there's a there's a lot of other things that uh, they will be bringing to us with understanding. They're not going to get it all. And, and I, I guess the, the other question I think we, uh, when we get a lot of these uh, different other facilities and what have you, uh, I hope we kind of got a, a grasp of what type of operating costs it's going to be. Because I know we already got Dallas dedicated millage to it, you know, but uh, I mean, I know they're using all of it now, but say, say, say we get a lot, a lot, a lot, you know, we might have to eventually, or uh, they might be eventually asked to contribute more for the operating cost side of it. George has already, last year, George came and said, do you think we might be able to increase our uh, percentage? I said, so where do you want me to take it from? Who do you want me to cut? What do you want me to cut out in order to give you? Or are you asking me to present to the commission that you want to increase millage? No, I don't want to increase millage. I can't give you any more without taking from somewhere else. They have discussed, are there ways that they can generate more revenue? Are there things they can do to help facilitate the improvements of these programs and, and new facilities uh, and be an active partner? I think y'all know, and Commissioner Evans and I have discussed it, some of y'all have as well. Unfortunately, Commissioner Evans and I have not only discussed it, we've lived it. And that is um, the fact that this Parks and Rec program is instrumental in the economic um, tourism of this community. When you start looking at how many heads and beds, how many people come into the community for recreational activities that are here for two or three days, they have to eat, they have to have accommodations, they have to, or they don't have to, they shop, and all of those generate revenue that helps support your splots, and by having a, a significant number of your dollars going into parks and recreation, is just a good investment in what our economic um, tourism is supposed to be about. I could not agree more. And I mean, I would venture to say that this is vital to our success from every area. And, I mean, you know, the quality of life for our citizens, the attraction from, from for an economic development perspective. Criminal justice. I mean, criminal justice, if people are happy and playing, they're not getting in trouble. I mean, this in my opinion, is the most valuable vision, whatever you want to call it, of our community. It, it's not classified or has not been classified by commissions in the past when they talked about back to basics. Back to basics was road, water, and sewer. But I would say very close to that is this program because it touches so many individuals Chairman said, 
people that go and vote for a SPLOST have somebody or they are involved in some aspect of this program that they are getting a direct or an indirect benefit from. And it's really easy for people, and I know the kind of questions you're talking about, to consider parks and rec as an ancillary, but really it's a fundamental. And, then, and I guess I'm getting that also is the, is the, the balance that's got to be needed when you, when you talk about operation costs, because eventually <coughs> we might be facing it, or either the ones that we hope utilize the services will be facing it, you know, because the money is going to have to come from somewhere if it requires more uh, more staffing and everything else. And if, 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 if the costs go up, you know, say on the citizens that we hope utilize the services, you might not have as many citizens using it as you would hope. But on the other side, of course, if we choose to fund it, uh, we'll, we'll have to come up with the money from someone else. You know, historically it has been um, baseball that has attracted uh, teams to visit here or individuals. And that is generally true. But we have had senior adult programs that are coming here. Uh, we had a, uh, an entire, when well, the program was all black softball league that came for their tournament here. Um, we have had tennis um, tournaments here and they, they have just added six new courts that will be utilized weeks or so for another tournament uh, where they will no longer have to utilize the and yeah, lambs, baldos. That, when you start looking at those as cold, hard cash as it is, those individuals that participate in soccer, those that participate in tennis, etc., are the demographics that they come, they bring additional family members. This isn't like a bunch of guys that play softball 24 hours a day on the pizza, drink kegs of beer, and sleep in their car. So these are the types. Um, these are the types. So most yeah. of those tournaments that they bring in, that they're bringing into the community are, are family or, or um, oriented tournaments. So you get family members, you get people that are staying in the hotels, eating in the restaurants, doing all those sort of things. So it's a great opportunity. And, and then I'll tell you, you know, to me, just the vision that I see, this soccer complex up here at Hire is going to be huge. Soccer is a growing, growing, growing sport for you. Uh, you're going to see more of it. And, you know, I, I know at this point, if I've got it right, this is going to be the largest soccer complex between Macon and Orlando. So th there's going to be a huge opportunity for people in this area, North Florida, South Georgia, to be coming into the Lowndes County community and enjoying that, co that soccer complex. You're going to see that exit up there. I firmly believe you're going to see growth there. Mm -hmm. You're going to see hotels. You're going to see things that's going to that's going to happen because that complex is there. So again, they do a fantastic job, and everything that they do uh, is to serve not only the citizens in this community, but they're a big economic driver in this community. They're huge. The great thing is, what they're selling can't be bought online. <laughs> what, is, what is the history of the park and rec? Did it start out with the city only and Parks Dave and Christian? Did it take a whole right, at, <laughs> right after the Bay Flower landed and Dave <laughs> Christian got off. <laughs> yes, that's when it started. And at that time, just like other things that uh, county government has become uh, involved in through the request and the demands of the public, uh, Parks and Rec provided. That was our first SBS fight. <laughs> the county at one time paid revenue to the Boys city. and Girls Club, Y, y and, um, and Rehab Passes Parks. Yeah, Passes Parks. The city at that time said, 
this is a countywide function. Y'all need to pay for it. But y'all are so backwards and so unsophisticated to be able to handle recreation. So we need to handle it. We need to operate it. We need to manage it. You need to pay for it. That's what it was when I got here. That's what it was. <laughs> and we debated this in splossed uh, arguments, lost arguments, SDS, and we so forth. We to be a full at that time. Because if you had a, a youth that was participating in the program, and you had a concern about it, you could pay money, but you couldn't, you didn't have any influence, you didn't have any direct uh, involvement with that individual that you didn't vote for, you couldn't vote for. So we said uh, that it should be, a if it's a county operation, that it should be operated by the county. And again, Y'all don't know enough about it to operate it. And I mean, they wasn't just being snooty about it. I mean, they were saying, well, Jim Rainwater had a recreation uh, degree. Uh, Robert Yost had a recreation degree. The only other job Larry had ever had had been recreation. So we know more, y'all don't. The way we compromised on that was the creation of this authority. And everybody told us this is going to be a disaster. And it was. Uh, it, it, they said it'll, it'll, it's going to be terrible. Y'all should not do it. It either needs to be fish or flat. It works. I was the loudest voice saying, this, I see a problem here. Uh, but they have made it work. It, the first few years, the birth, Pains, labor pains were awful, but what it is now is successful. Yeah, and that's a credit. That's a credit to the board members that served and did all that heavy lifting, and certainly um, to the to the director that they currently got. Um, I go to most all of the parks and rec board meetings, and again, I would encourage all of you commissioners, any of these boards. <laughs> That you can go to, and you're what I mean, they're open to any of you. If you want to be more informed, to go to these board meetings, and you'll hear a lot about what's going on and what their plans are and what their discussions are. Um, so I encourage you to go to those meetings. But I went to a meeting, and um, Mr. McDowell had been on that board from inception, the from the very beginning, and you can see the passion that those individuals have for the job that they, they're they doing because they've taken that from infancy, seen it grow, seen the success of it, and they'll fight you in a battle right now for those things. And those are the type of citizens that when we're looking at making appointments to these boards and authorities, that's the kind of individuals you want to be looking at. It shouldn't be just a popularity contest as far as when we make these appointments. It should be, is, does this individual have the desire and have the passion to do the best job that they can? Now, I, I, I can tell you there's not many on that board that does not have that passion for recreation in this community. Uh, and they all work together. They work uh, in unison. They make their decisions about what is best, what they can afford to do, and how they can make these things come to fruition. And they, they to me, they've done a fantastic job. And they job. ignore the political pressure that was initially put upon them. And these individuals don't, if you go over there, you don't know whether an individual was appointed by the city or Absolutely. The there is no breakdown along. That's right. They leave incorporated like around the hospital authority a certain day yep. of the month. They meet on the third Wednesday. Thursday, Thursday. Wednesday or Thursday Wednesday. at four thirty. Wednesday. 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 I think it's the third Wednesday at four thirty. I believe. Right. Well, it's I on the website. On the sure. I, I keep it on my calendar all the time. Lawson Associates did that, or was that? I mean, I'm sure it was under the direction of George, but that. that.
master plan. Master plan. Uh, George was heavily involved in it. These individuals came down and met, and that's one of the things George was uh, requiring in whoever does the new, the new uh, master plan. They had so many meetings in each community, mm -hmm. and one of the requirements that George has put in the uh, RFQ is that they be held in districts of the county commission. Third Wednesday. So that all segments Forest of the community had an opportunity to say, this is what we would, we would like as a whole and what our community, this particular community, yeah, Ayara, Lake Park, to me, it's what we're concerned with. Oh, absolutely. And uh, Los and Associates is the firm who designed North Lounge initially. And people, when we put in the, they brought the idea to us of a uh, skate park. Uh, and uh, Brocky Brock was the first one at that time to say, I think we need to do this. I said, wait a minute, we're going to put kids out there on skateboards on our property. What are we going to do about the liability? How many broken arms and concussions are we going to have? It worked. Yeah. Now they spray paint something that you could, <laughs> if you turn your back. But That's a part yeah. of that culture, though. Yeah. yeah. They wear those little things in their ears that stretch out the luggage. Is there anything else? Now, just don't forget to make sure that Lake Park is on your foot at and the um, library is there as well as the spot. Address of Lake Park of Hay Hire don't mean you live in the city of Hay Hire. Okay, keep your wheels turning, Scotty. Yeah. <laughs>